All right, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about a pretty unique feature of Hunchly called selectors. Selectors are just unique pieces of information such as an email address, a username, a domain name that is of interest for you when you're doing an investigation or doing research for a project. So how selectors actually work is when you input them, you are going to have Hunchly searching for that selector everywhere you go. So this means that if you put in an email address or a username, every single page you go to, Hunchly is actually looking at that, that page, looking for the selector, and then registering a hit for that particular page that you've captured. So how do we actually add some selectors to our cases? This is pretty easy. We just click the Add button in the dashboard, and we'll put in my Twitter handle, jms.py, and click Add. Hunchly is actually going to scan backwards through the case looking for that selector and now is also going to look at every page going forward for jms.py. We can see down in the history view that we've actually got a selector hit here. That's that little blue badge. And what's really cool is we can tell the history view, hey, I want you to filter on this particular selector. So only show me pages that have this selector present, which is really useful because you can combine multiple selectors together, which I'll show you shortly. Now, if you have an Excel sheet full of a bunch of selectors, you can copy them all out of one column of your spreadsheet, paste them in here, one per line, click Save, and it will add every one of those selectors all at once. It will do all the scanning backwards and registering hits like normal. Really useful stuff. So the other way that we can handle adding selectors is actually from the Chrome extension. So when we're on a particular page and we see something of interest, I'll see if I can operate my mouse with some accuracy here. All right. So you highlight the text, you right click on it, and in the Hunchly pop-up menu, you can say store text as selector, or because we actually right clicked on a link, we can say store link as selector. Where storing links as a selector is useful is if you're researching a particular website, for example, and you want to know any other time that in an article or a forum post that that website has been referenced, you store the link as a selector and Hunchly will actually track every time it spots a link to that particular site. So that's really useful. So let's go store text as selector. So now we have Justin Sites that's registered as a selector. If we check our dashboard, we can see cool. We have it here. We can filter on it, for example. Um, we can also combine it with the jms.py uh, selector as well if we want to, so that's really useful. So this is all great stuff. Now what you might not have noticed is that in our Chrome extension up here, we see a little red badge with the number 2. This is telling us we've had two selector hits on this particular page. We can click on it and we can see the selector hits for this page. This badge is kind of designed to call to your attention that there is selector hits on this page that you should pay attention to. And this might be useful as a cue to you as an investigator that, hey, this unique piece of information like an IP address or a domain name has shown up and uh, we should actually probably take a look at it. You can go into your dashboard and dig into the data. Now, what you can also do when you're done is export all of these selectors to your computers so that you can, for example, review them or pull them into another tool. Very simply, it just dumps it out to a CSV that we can view and it will show you all the selector hits and where they occurred. So this is really useful, again, if you're moving data in between Hunchly and another tool or if you just want something to reference later on. And there's one other cool thing that we can do here in our settings panel. We can tell Hunchly to highlight selectors. So we can tell it to highlight selectors everywhere we go. And then when it stores the page, it will store the highlighting in place. Or we can tell it to remove the highlighting before storing so that the highlighting doesn't show up in your data captures. So by selecting to highlight selectors and saying on, we can go back and re-enable. Now, one thing you would have noticed here is when I saved the settings, it turned the capture off. This is just because by default, I have Hunchly set to not be turned on when I first start my browser. So that's why when we click save, it's just pushing those settings over to the Chrome extension. And that's what's going on there. All right. So we have highlight selectors turned on. We can refresh this page. And now you can see that the selector hits are all being highlighted. So we have both my username on Twitter being highlighted and my full name, which were both selectors. And this is really useful to call to your attention that, hey, there's selector hits on this page. That's all there is for selectors. Very simple but very powerful tool to aid you in your investigations. If you have any questions or you're having any problems using selectors, please don't hesitate to reach out. Support at hunch.ly. And I'll see you in the next video.